Keratoconus screening is uh, a very expertise of Dr. Damier Gatinel and from Rothschild, Roth, Rothschild Foundation in Paris, France. Bonjour Damien, bonjour à France, à Paris. Euh, une question, quand est-ce que tu étais la dernière fois à la Tour Eiffel ou est-ce que la Tour Eiffel est fermée? When have you been, non, the, last, when have you been the last time for our non-French speaking audience, when have you been the last time on the, the Eiffel Tower? Uh, on, on the Eiffel Tower or nearby? Nearby mostly every week, but on was probably at last ESCRS. We okay. had a session there. Okay, really, <laughs> did you? So maybe it's a good idea for the yes. next for the next Congress we might enter the Eiffel Tower. But we won't get of as course, high... Of course, you, you can Go book on. the whole thing if you want. Yeah, okay, but it won't be as high as 400 kilometers as I'm now in the International Space Station, so maybe we, we should go higher and probably have the next one on Mars. I don't know. Anyway, right. Damien, it's so good you are with us live, and we are very much looking forward to keratoconus detection with Anterion. Thank you. So I hope my remote works, and uh, please... Uh, don't hesitate to send the, the slides. First, I would like to thank you for inviting me to this uh, very nice uh, symposia, this academy. And uh, as you said, the detection with uh, an instrument of early forms of keratoconus is a daily um, consideration for uh, refractive surgeons and uh, anterior segment specialists in general. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my co-author uh, Alain Saad and uh, acknowledge I'm a consultant for Heidelberg. So, uh, as I said, the, the reason why people want to detect keratoconus early is because it's uh, uh, something which, if you don't do it, expose you to the risk of post-LASIK uh, or even PRK ectasia. And um, it is very uh, important that you have a confidence in your diagnosis to exclude the patient that are at risk. And uh, it's a complex domain because uh, of many reasons I will briefly um, allude to. First, uh, you could have a very uh, kind of uh, selective approach, uh, like when you are not sure of a mushroom. Uh, if it's not comestible, you can discard it. But if you are doing this in all uh, patients that you see, you may not have a very successful practice. And uh, again, it's at the airport. You want to really screen people and have a sensitive approach, which is maybe have the... Uh, the, the, the gate ringing for nothing instead of leaving patient going through. But there is also a need to identify the false positive that you may see uh, in your practice. So this is, again, an allusion to the specificity and the sensitivity that are required to have a good diagnostic tool. Uh, the other problem with this uh, the domain is that there are many instruments. And even within an instrument, you can have different, for example, scales. Um, here are four maps that look different but that emanate from the same cornea and depending on the bandwidth that is the scale you use for the actual keratometry you can have a very reassuring appearance like on the bottom or something that that may instantaneously evocate the possibility of a form first keratoconus uh, up left and even an advanced keratoconus upright so this is a problem the uh, other problem is there is no admitted definitive threshold and there may not even be one to distinguish between a normal cornea and an abnormal cornea and that's another problem and we have to find the best threshold that is the most sensitive and still maybe um, the reasonably good specific criteria to screen patients this is a very interesting study that was performed and lead, uh, led by uh, Renato Ambrosio, where he asked many uh, experts in corneal uh, topography to grade corneas based on their actual uh, appearance, actual curvature. And 
Again, this cornea, for example, could be judged as normal until <clears throat> we, you are informed that the other eye has keratoconus or pellucid, and then this leads to revise your judgment. But even without this, some experts with only one map can give very different um, uh, verdicts. The fact, again, that one cornea has frank keratoconus is a very strong argument to diagnose the other cornea with early form through subclinical keratoconus. There is a vast semantic also a debate on these things. But the problem st still there when you have two corneas within the same patient that are looking a bit suspicious, like here, they are flat, but there is an inferior steepening that you can see. And this is always something that doctors are intrigued with. So a few years ago, uh, Stephen Kleiss uh, said that Historically speaking, people started to uh, screen people with only uh, placido-based instruments. And in this context, when you had an eye with keratoconus and the other eye was normal, like in this example that I'm showing you in the same patient, you could say that the eye, which was normal, the left, which is on the left on my slide, when you look at it here, normal, based on the uh, indice of Kleismeda, is probably a false negative. Under the assumption that I challenge today that there is no unilateral keratoconus, which may not be true, but in the vast majority of cases, keratoconus is still bilateral. And in, in this context, if you can find a test which makes the normal eye placido becoming form first or diagnosed as suspicious, then you can probably predict that you have increased your sensitivity. And using this approach, we developed with my colleague Alain a, um, a tool based at that time on the OPSCAN because we had a vast database of patients. We used it since the early 2000s. And this is exactly based on this uh, um, um, uh, approach that we have now developed for the anterior, which is simplifying this thing with crushing many information into one number, which we call the score. But of course, Information can be expanded in other variables, which are shown here uh, as a radar and curves related to the pachymetry variation. So <clears throat> we use the same thing. And at that time, uh, this was published and validated the score with the OPSCAN by independent team um, in different uh, ethnicities, etc., etc. So we have replicated this approach and used this, the same protocol, that is, we compared normal eyes emanating from patients that had bilateral LASIK with no complication with a minimum of four years follow-up um, with a, um, <clears throat> a kind of a, um, a bilateral but very asymmetrical keratoconus. So um, with the anterior, we screened those patients. They could not be followed as for the off scan with the four years follow up because we had the instrument since the last two years. But we are reasonably good in predicting that this normal group is really made of normal patient uh, because not only the anterior was normal, but Pentacam, off scan, OPD scan were unremarkable. And on the other group, we selected, of course, as the eye of most interest, the eye that was looking almost normal again in patients who had keratoconus on the other eye. And among the parameters which we found discriminant were, was, were, was this one, uh, the classic uh, inferior keratometry and the superior keratometry, which is described 25 years ago by uh, Rabinovitz, but still valid. And as you can see, showing uh, kind of uh, using the box plots there. Uh, of course, there is overlap, but you see there is at least a, a visual segregation that you feel you can use, not maybe alone, but in the combination of other parameters. The other parameters was the uh, steepest cartometry minus the opposite cartometry in this uh, in this. The, the, the algorithm looks for the highest K reading on the actual map and systematically removes from it the opposite, symmetrically centrally opposite point value. And this is, of course, scoring a kind of asymmetry level as well but with more freedom than the I minus S. And this is, again, something which is uh, showing a good discriminant um, ability. As shown here on this slide, where there's, as you can see again in the box plot, a nice uh, separation, although again with, and this is inherent to this problem, a large overlap. 
not to forget, of course, because the anterior provides you with posterior surface and thickness maps. So we found also that the gradient of thinning toward the center, or you can say the opposite, the gradient of thickening uh, toward the periphery was also abnormal in some eyes, and we used this uh, in the score. So all the variables I showed you are just a few which are used to uh, calculate the score. And we need a score which is based on more complex statistics because, as I showed you, those parameters may be statistically different, but clinically there's a large overlap, so you need to combine them uh, to have a better discrimination. And this is what we've done here, as you can see. Uh, this is using uh, on our group a combination, a linear combination of different indices. Um, and when we use them, we can achieve 75% uh, sensitivity uh, for detecting those uh, from first or subclinical keratoconus. Um, that's uh, interesting in the sense that we have also a reasonably good specificity. Of course, this means that a quarter of the corneas that we want to detect are not detected. And if we would detect them all, we would lose a lot of specificity. So we have a threshold. And second, second I would say also that there may be eyes that are not detected for good reasons. This is an example of an eye for those who do not believe that keratoconus is, is, can be unilateral. We believe that this is a case of unilateral keratoconus. As you can see here, the eye was uh, exactly the same over the last 15 years, negative for all OPSCAN and, and, and Pentacam indices. And that patient had unilateral keratoconus because he rubbed only one eye and he was very keen on not rubbing the other eye because this eye was ensuring him to be spectacular free. But the right eye he would rub. And when, he, when we told him to stop rubbing 15 years ago, he stopped and the keratoconus was stable on the right eye. So again, this is probably a true unilateral uh, and this is a good reason why this is not detected. And if you want more cases like that, I invite you to visit this website, defeatkeratoconus.com. So with all this uh, made, we also tested on an external group or algorithm to detect the true keratoconus. Because if you don't detect all keratoconus or mostly all of them, it means that you have a problem. What we want is, again, uh, find a way to be more sensitive, but we have to detect the cases. And that's, that's an achieved goal here where we detected all the keratoconus, advanced one, only one normal eye was diagnosed, or we had one false positive, but we had no false negative, which is reassuring on the quality of the algorithm. So this is the graphic user interface that is developed now by uh, Heidelberg on the anterior. You can see on the left, the four maps of interest of the cornea, actual uh, curvature, pachymetry, uh, elevation, anterior and posterior. On the right, there is a radar, which is made to visually capture uh, immediately the indices which may be abnormal and you can see in that case this is a normal eye the score is negative and uh, there is no uh, yellow or red color in the radar so this is immediately bringing the information that this eye is probably a normal one of course you can develop this information to um, um, to, to uh, this is a radar, I'm sorry. And below the radar, you have those pachymetry uh, gradient and uh, absolute pachymetry uh, progression from the center uh, to the periphery. The, 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 the lower the curve, the more um, thin and probably fragile the cornea is. This is the magnification of the radar. You can see the six indices that were selected, thinnest point, posterior elevation, three millimeter irregularity, K-max, uh, the value I alluded earlier, K-max minus the opposite keratometry and the inferior minus superior keratometry. These were among the indices that were uh, built, using to build the score, but they comprise not all the indices and there are others we don't show here. Um, if you want the exact values of the radar indices, they are uh, in the box here in red and of course they can be also displayed for the right and the left eye, and you can see also the difference between the two. 
This is another example of a, a more intriguing cornea. You see a bow tie, uh, strax with uh, values in the orange and yellow. So this is more alerting. And when you see the radar, the score is positive. The radar shows a, a yellow and um, orange uh, uh, kind of uh, protrusion, protuberance, and that's not good. So that's again, tells you that this eye is not uh, a good candidate for LASIK probably because of these indices. This is the other eye of the same patient. It's even a bit worse because the eye minus S is also abnormal now. And that's again uh, uh, corroborated with a score which is uh, quite high. So again, you can have the values with uh, this. And these are other examples. This is a thin cornea with a radar showing some abnormalities, but the score is still negative. Again, because this is a thin cornea and the indices which are uh, here red are just related to the thin uh, characteristic of the cornea. So this is just a thin cornea, but still the radar shows you that there are values uh, below the average. This is a frank keratoconus. So of course you don't need any radar or score to say this is a keratoconus, but if you follow patient, you may be pleased to know that with this number, you can have a kind of a metric which enables you to uh, estimate the progression uh, of a keratoconus over time when you repeat the examination, instead of looking at K-max, you have a global, more comprehensive approach to uh, score the cornea uh, globally. And if the score increases over time, you can assess probably progression with more confidence than just based on the number. And again, you can also look at these numbers. This is a very frank also aspect of keratoconus with a very uh, 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 alarming radar. You see the curves are very down. So this is not good, of course, but you can use to follow uh, patient those indices again. And finally, uh, um, in addition to the score, you have those very, uh, I think, um, um, uh, practical uh, displays of the progression using different parameters, can be K-mask, can be score, with different maps that, again, help you to really assess stability or progression and very conveniently, because you can have discrete analysis of different parameters and draw a line over time, which is very helpful, I think, and unique to this instrument. I didn't discuss much about epithelial mapping, but this will be probably also a tool that we will incorporate maybe in a refinement or which will be added to help uh, to diagnose early keratoconus. And uh, there are also indices in development related to the symmetry and antiomorphism appreciation between the right and the left cornea. So I think this is a very uh, interesting uh, approach uh, for surgeons who want to screen patients and also for anterior segment specialists who are interested in keratoconus uh, uh, screening and, um, and, and, um, and uh, follow-up to, to, to check progression and, and take um, appropriate decision. Thank you very much for your attention. Super, Damien. Thank you for uh, introducing the score. I would like the other presenters to have a thought if the 75% sensitivity is sufficient for them or how would they overcome the gap of 25%. Meanwhile, uh, I would read you two questions. The first one said, practically, if you have the score, is what you recommend First, look at the score and then uh, move on with the radar if there's any suspicion, but never use the score without the radar. This is question number one. And how do you deal with progression? How is that visualized and assessed? So uh, first, for the 25%, I, I think, again, this is something you can never really go beyond that because uh, keratoconus is sometimes uh, not a black or white issue. So. There will be always eyes that if you would detect them, you would have so many normal eyes detected that you will lose good indications. So um, I think this is a, we have to see the three quarters full bottle instead of the 25% empty. Second for uh, the score, I think the score is again uh, a way to crush down a lot of information. Doctors like to have simple metrics and uh, uh, I think, I hope it is a robust one. Uh, that, that makes you instantaneously uh, uh, judging a cornea. But as you know, judgment sometimes should not be made. You don't judge a book by its cover. I would say you don't judge a cornea only by the score. 
But when the score is positive, immediately it may help you to uh, look why it is positive, and then you have to look at the radar, and usually there's no mystery. If the score is positive, it's either a problem of irregularity uh, in the curvature, uh, a thickness issue, etc., etc. And depending on the context, you can really say, okay, I'm going to do this or that, and uh, you have catagonus, or you have an early one, etc., given the constellation of this information. But the way to do it is like top down. You you have a number, and then you 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 have a simplified information, and you can add layers of complexity until you reach the decisional uh, the decision you want to do with this patient. Okay, I give up on asking the other speakers probably because this answer that and time is over. Anyway, maybe later on we can come back to that point and can have an estimate. Anyway, I think you're absolutely right. Such a score is what doctors want. If you use it wise with the additional information, I think uh, that's a real step forward. And again, the keratoconus screening is up to come. So thank you to Paris and uh, goodbye for now. Au revoir.